Hey guys, it's LEGO Boys E3. Today I'm gonna put magnets in this Rubik's clock. Alright, so here we have my Rubik's clock that I got quite a while ago. I got it on eBay and I have an unboxing video of me opening it up and lubricating it and everything. But what we're gonna be doing today is trying out a new mod on this cube, or clock, where we're actually going to be gluing magnets into this puzzle, which will hopefully improve the turning and the pins on the puzzle. Now, normally you would do this with a non Rubik's brand clock because the pins on those are generally pretty bad. This one has actually pretty decent pins, but I'm just gonna try it out anyways and just see what happens. So the way this actual magnet mod works is you have two different types of magnets. The first is a ring like this, which goes right around the pin. It's not actually on the inside of the puzzle, it's on the outside. Not quite sure if it's WCA legal, but I assume it probably would be, and I've seen quite a few people doing it. And also you have another little magnet which goes right on the surface of the pin, and that way when you push the pin in, the two magnets get attracted to each other and it sticks down. Anyway, as you just saw earlier, I was actually taking some tape off the outside of the puzzle because that's actually the best way to keep the puzzle together. Uh, after you've taken it apart. So let's just go ahead and lift this up. I haven't done this in a long time, so I don't really know what I'm doing, but put that on there. And now this black part should come out separately, like that. Anyway, there's now a couple of screws to get this whole thing to come apart, and here we go. It looks like it's kind of falling apart now. There is the inner mechanism of the clock. Now this isn't really supposed to be like a full tutorial on how to magnetize a clock. I'm just kind of walking you through the process of how I did it. If you want to actually see the entire process, I'll link to another video in the description, which is how I learned how to do this. But now there are these little metal rods inside the pins, which we just want to take out. This is the reason that the Rubik's clocks are actually a lot better than most other brands of clocks. I guess just because these pins are kind of stiffer and they get held into place better. Anyway, now that I've taken all of those out, let's just go ahead and get everything reassembled. Alright, so I've got the clock assembled up to this point, and after a little bit of experimentation, I think I'm actually going to be taking this mod in a bit of a new direction that I haven't seen anyone do before. So if we actually take the face of the clock and put it on the puzzle just like this, you can see what most people do when they make a magnetic clock is they just put the magnets right on here on the surface of the puzzle just like this. But what I want to do is there's an equally good surface right on this black part of the puzzle, and so as you can see, you can also just glue the magnet right on this black part. And so I've experimented with doing that for just this one pin and it seems to be working fine. You can see we push it down and it snaps into place really nicely. The one problem of course is that this plastic cover will now not fit on because you have a little bit of magnet sticking up right there. So you kind of just have to drill a hole right there on the plastic part, which I'm gonna do on all of these pieces and just kind of see what happens. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue all those magnets on and drill those holes in all those pieces and I'll get back to you before I start putting it back together. All right, so here we go. I have finished putting on all the magnets. As you can see here, it works like a normal clock. Very easy to push those pins up and down. I'm very happy with that. And I've also put holes in all of these paper cutouts. So you see they fit right around the magnets just like this. There we go. And also the plastic covers. I have really big holes in those too. Unfortunately, I did irreversibly damage these parts quite a bit. As you can see here, there's kind of like a curved scratch that goes all the way along there just from using sandpaper. Uh, anyway, that doesn't really matter too much and you probably won't be able to notice it too much once the puzzle is assembled. So that seems to fit on there pretty nicely. So now we just have to make sure that all these plastic parts are rotated the correct way so that all these little pins and things will stick in in the right places, and I think this is good. Now, the two halves of the clock will actually not stay together by themselves, so you have to get something like a little piece of tape, or some people even use like 3x3 stickers, and just stick it on here. And here we go, now the clock is finally assembled. And the pins move really well with these magnets on them. I really like the feeling of the pins. It's definitely very different from normal Rubik's clock pins. With the original mechanism, when you push a pin in, it's kind of like an equal force all the way along that movement from one side to the other. On this one, you just kind of push it, and then it just kind of snaps into the other side. So it's just kind of two possible positions. It cannot be in the middle, or at least it's very hard to get it in the middle. Whereas before, you just push it a little bit, it would be in the middle. Push it a little bit more, it'd be on the other side. This one is just one position or the other. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn the clock. Turn pretty much just how I remember it turning before, except now it's a lot easier to move these pins. And I feel like it might even make me a little bit faster. If there's any downsides to it, it might just be that it's a little bit less accurate because you might just kind of tap one of the pins and not mean to actually push it down, whereas before it would actually take some force to push all the way through. 
but I do really like the feeling of it and I think I'll definitely get used to it while solving. I'm definitely glad that I did do it the way I did by actually putting these magnets inside of the plastic instead of on top of the plastic. I feel like if they were on top of the plastic, there'd just be so little extra part of the pin sticking up that would be really hard to push in, a lot harder than normal at least. So if you're willing to mod a 30 year old puzzle like this or if you just have one of those cheap off-brand clocks that doesn't have very good pins, I would definitely recommend doing this. The magnets do definitely help a lot and create a very different feel than the original clock. As for actually putting the magnets down into the plastic like I did, I can't really say that I recommend it. It's a lot of extra work for not a whole lot of benefit. Plus I kind of messed up my clock with those kind of scuff lines on the inside when I was sanding them. But I am definitely glad that I did it because I don't know of anyone else who has done it before in the past. So let's just go ahead and scramble this clock up real quick. But yeah, I'll have everything linked in the description down below for what I used to make this puzzle. So the tutorial that I followed for making it as well as the magnets that I used. All of that all in the description. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!